Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Sports Report on Masson. Matt Wieters accepted the Orioles' one-year $15.8 million qualifying offer this past Friday in 2015. Matt hit 267, eight home runs, 25 RBIs, 14 doubles in 75 games after recovering from Tommy John surgery. 29-year-old has spent his entire career with the Orioles, dating back to being drafted fifth overall in the 2007 draft. He became the second player in Major League Baseball history to accept a qualifying offer on the heels of uh, Colby Rasp was doing the same thing. And, of course, uh, when you look at Matt Wieters again, 267 batting average, eight home runs, 25 RBIs for the 2015 season. And we welcome you to the Mid-Atlantic Sports Report with Phil Wood, Mel Anthony, and former Orioles pitcher Dave Johnson. I'm Tom Davis. And joining us now live is Matt Wieters. And, Matt, let me just ask you this. What went through your mind for the entire process before you accepted the qualifying offer? I mean, was it hard to do or did, did, did it come easy? Um, a lot went through my mind. <laughs> There's... There are a lot of different scenarios and uh, a lot of different directions that, that were possible. But, you know, I, I felt like uh, like I was getting moved to come back to Baltimore for, for another year. And, and uh, you know, it makes it easy when, when you have the kind of baseball city that Baltimore is as well as the clubhouse and, and the coaching staff that we have in, in Baltimore. You know, it makes it, it makes it an easier decision than, you know, taking a one-year deal might be otherwise. Well, you got off to such a great start in 2014 before you went down with the injury and, and had to have the uh, uh, surgery. And I know from talking with a lot of guys who've spent extensive time on the disabled list that when you're on the DL, you feel less a part of the team. And when you finally make it back, it's almost like starting over. Was it was it like that for you? Um, well, the part of it, the guys, the guys made me feel a part of the team, even though uh, you know I wanted to be out there playing, especially uh, in their their great, in the great run of 2014. But uh, you no, know, they. I, I still being around the team helped me, and, and I think that was a great decision to be able to stay around the team and, and work with Caleb and, and help out anywhere I could. But uh, I, the playing wise, you, you kind of you you get out of the routine of just playing baseball because right? when you sit on the sidelines and watch for so long, your your brain gets going and you start thinking, "Well, I can do this or I can do that," as opposed to just being able to react. And, and baseball is such a reactionary game; it, it, it takes a little while to get back into that. Matt, how is your arm? How is your arm strength? And what will be the challenge to be to becoming a catcher that can that can catch regularly every day and not have to worry anything about your elbow? Yeah, I mean, my arm feels good. I'm looking forward to to this spring and, and this year. As far as you know, most of the guys I've talked to, that 18 month, the two year recovery after Tommy John is when it kind of starts feeling back to pre surgery normal. And, and so I'm looking forward to that. But the, the thing I'm most excited about right now is I'm able to go through a normal off season. It's not going to do rehab on the elbow, you know, three times a week. I'm actually getting to go to the weight room and just work out the whole body, which, uh, you know, I think it's great for being able to get just in, in shape in general. Matt, when you, you know, obviously you got the qualifying offer and then you have basically a week to look at other things, other offers and what the situation is with you and Scott and his staff and obviously your family looking at everything. Was there, was there any chance, was there a point at time where you thought, hey, I'm leaning towards maybe, you know, taking an offer with another club or seeing what's out there or all along was it just a matter of like, you know what, this is the right thing to do at this time? I, I think most of the time, most of the from the season on, we were kind of leaning towards the qualifying offer, but at the same time, you, you still never quite know how fast or, or how many teams you're, you're going to talk to. And it's just, uh, you know, it's what makes it, makes it hard in the free agency period you, we, to try and cram in talking to as many teams as you can in, in seven days. And, and that's why we, we felt, you know, we felt that, uh, you know, that there's, there could be a lot worse places to play for a year than Baltimore, especially for me to be able to be comfortable with the staff, comfortable with the pitchers, comfortable with the, the clubhouse. It, it's something to where, you know, when that option was kind of on the table, once I got offered the qualifying offer, it was really where we were leaning the whole time as far as, okay, that's that's a pretty good option to have. Matt, let's go back before you had the surgery. Did you at some point say to yourself that, that I can't stand this pain and I've got to have the surgery, or did it come about all of a sudden and they recommended the surgery? Um, I mean, the surgery was out there after the MRI. It was still kind of, okay, how are you going to, how's it going to feel? Because some guys, you know, react differently to it. And it was just more of, okay, how can I get back to playing how I want to play? And, and I think most everybody involved felt like if I want to get back to, to having the arm strength and being able to make throws that I want to make, 
probably needed to go get it fixed. It, it's something to where we probably could have tried to <clears throat> try and, I don't know, put a Band-Aid on it and, and just monitor it. And But, you know, at that point in my career, I wanted to be able to get back to, to throwing like I, I did before surgery. Matt, the thing that has never really been adequate, adequately explained is, is why there was a perception by some people that somehow a catcher needed less time to recover from Tommy John surgery than a pitcher, in as much as a catcher actually throws the ball more than most starting pitchers, more than any pitcher, basically, from the course of the first inning to the ninth inning. Uh, but there, again, you, you came back in spring training, and you, I mean, you took it slow, obviously, but uh, the idea that somehow this was going to be easier for, for a position player than for a pitcher never made much sense to me. Yeah, it's something to wear. And Dr. Andrews, you know, kind of let me know that from the get go. He, he says he can't he can't promise anything quicker than what a pitcher's rehab would be for it. At the same time, we you know we wanted to push as far and, and as hard as we could. But but uh, you're right. It, it came down to you know it's just the amount of throws. It's not even the intensity of throws. It's a matter of building up the fatigue level and being able to kind of rebound from making that many throws. And and, and the thing with talking with other catchers is that I got a wide variety of, you know, some guys said they were ready in nine months. Some guys said it was a year. Some guys said it was 18 months before they really felt like they were back to, you know, be able to play well. Matt, you went through all last year with the idea, you know, with the potential of free agency looming. Was that a distraction? And if so, what did you learn from being from that distraction last year, from playing as a free agent last year, that can help you this year with the dis, the, the possible distraction. Yeah, it, it wasn't a distraction because once you step on the field, it, it's about competing to win that game. And, and uh, if your mind's not in that, you're gonna you're not gonna have much success. But but it's also part of the reason why you know Baltimore was I felt like a good decision for me because if this tr does turn out to be another last year of your contract one year thing i had that experience and, and the emotional range that you kind of go through of of you know the last you know a couple of weeks of the season a couple of months of the season you're kind of thinking you know is this my last time playing here and, and so it, it's nice to have that experience of okay i i've had that before so i know kind of what to expect emotion wise from it Matt, you had you, you talk a lot about you know your decision to come back and the coaching staff, the players, the clubhouse, uh, great ballpark and all that. But specifically with Buck, who clearly is running the show there, uh, you know, in between the lines and during the game and beforehand, give us an idea of the difference between say, you know, your relationship with Buck and how he handles players, specifically you as a catcher as opposed to maybe some other managers that you've had, even though you only had a couple, maybe some interim guys or some per short period of times in the beginning of your uh, career? Yeah, I think, I think each manager that, that, that I've played for has had a, a huge impact on my career. And, and Dave, you know, when I first came up, you know, Dave really taught <coughs> you know, me and a bunch of other young guys how to be a professional, how to just show up every day and be able to be you know, ready to, to strap it on and play every day. And, and I think that really helped us and carries us over to when Buck took over and Buck kind of added the level of preparedness and, and being ready for any situation that kind of took it from being, okay, we're a professional, we're going to go out there and, and, and give it all we got to, okay, we actually know, you know a good idea of what's going to be coming out of this game, let's prepare for it as much as possible. Matt, have you uh, talked with any of the other uh, free agents uh, that the Orioles have and tried to maybe encourage them to come back or say, hey, you know, I'd like to see a play for the Orioles continue? Um, I'll, I'll just check in with them. I, I don't, like I said, everybody's going to have their own situation and, and everybody's going to do what, what they feel is, is best. Uh, I would love to have them all back, and I think uh, I think everybody kind of seconds that sentiment and that that we love our team and we love the guys that were involved. So, so uh, we we all love to have them back on our team, but we're gonna we're gonna root for them. You know, anytime they're not playing the Orioles next year, if they're not there. Matt, what does it take for the Orioles to get back to the postseason next year? Uh, continue to grind 162, and, and uh, you know that's what you know we're gonna we know we're gonna be able to be prepared going into the season. It's just a matter of of going out there and performing, and and uh, you know everybody. To make the playoffs, you have to have a lot of things go right through the year. Hopefully, we're able to stay healthy. And hopefully, you know, a lot of things fall our way. But all we can do is control the process and control trying to get ready to, to grind it out for the whole season. 
Well, Matt, we appreciate you taking some time to be with us here on the Mid-Atlantic Sports Report. Enjoy the conversation. Look forward to seeing you in spring training. All right, guys. All right, Matt Waiters, the Orioles catcher, back with the Birds, taking the qualifying offer of $15.8 million on a one-year deal. And, of course, when you look back, I mean, I personally believe the Orioles started to turn the corner when after Weeders was signed and he got to the big leagues. I mean, we know about Adam Jones and, and Weeders, but they were two of the major forces in this team turning losing seasons into winning seasons. Yeah, I think, you know, you talk a lot, Tom, about having that core group. We all know you have to have the core group, and we mentioned the Yankees core group when they had that great run for a long period of time, and they were winning championships and it seemed like they were winning the division every year. Um, you got to have those four or five guys, and Matt Weeders clearly is one of those three or four. Um, clearly Nick Markakis was here before that, even Brian Roberts, but... Unfortunately for a guy like Brian Roberts and even Nick, um, they were kind of at the end of, the, end of their career, and Matt Wieters was at the beginning of his, and sort of same thing with Adam Jones. So, you know, having Matt Wieters take this qualifying offer, and clearly it makes him here for one more year, but you just wonder if, thing, if, the, if the club can turn some things around uh, from this year, get the healthy pitching, and then add some pitching, the starting, the starting pitching to the rotation, and get some consistency. If, in fact, they can do that, you know, will that allow them to keep Matt Wieters even long term? Does it make him want to stay even more so? Because clearly he's been part of something pretty special here with the Orioles. No, they haven't won the World Championships, but they've done a lot of winning over the last three or four years, and that's have to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of guys that make a lot of money with other teams, but they don't win. And I can tell you, that's not a lot of fun when you don't win. He's tied to the Orioles. There's no question about it. And he's entering his prime only being 29 years old. Tough season in 2015, given the injuries. As he talked about the emotional uh, roller coaster of kind of going up and down and wondering, you know, is this going to be my final couple months in Baltimore? Certainly he has an attachment to the Orioles, and now he's got to go through it again. But as he said, and I thought it was very interesting, he'll know how to handle those emotions next year, next year as the season winds down. But the fact that he's going to spend all offseason uh, working out and lifting weights instead of doing rehabilitation for his elbow, that all points to the fact that Matt Wieters is going to have a good year uh, for the Orioles next year and the fact is he never did catch three consecutive games so that, that that was an issue but next year he should be ready to go and now that you have three catchers Weeders, Clevenger and Caleb Joseph I mean it's, it's definitely a strength and there's no reason to believe that Matt Weeders won't bounce back and have that type of year you know remember before the injury uh, a couple, well, before he had the injury he was he was on an MVP type pace so it's a, it's a pretty uh, significant uh, signing for the Orioles. Well, first of all, he gets a significant raise, obviously, almost almost double the money that he made last year. But it's, it it does impact the rest of the roster because isn't Clevenger out of options now? Yes. So at that point in time, uh, can you keep Clevenger around? That's going to be difficult. I mean, he can play more than one position, obviously, but uh, he may be a valuable trade chip in the off season. Mm -hmm. And Caleb Joseph's done such a terrific job as the everyday catcher. I mean, it's, I'm not sure that I'd call it a, a bitter pill to swallow, but the point is he's clearly going to lose a lot of playing time with Weeders back. Well, the other thing, too, I think, when you, when you look at the – I just think that the way this thing happened and the order that it happened with – and obviously you only have a week to make a decision when you have this qualifying offer. But it really, I think, bodes well for the Orioles. That, look, they knew they had to double his salary. With, with this qualifying offer or, or just about. And Dave, when you look back at it, it, it just seems like, you know, you take care of one thing and then you look to the next thing. And, and, and you know, they, they had their fair share of free agents still out there. So, you know, yeah, the, and I think this is, this is a guy, look, there was three guys, I think they, of the big three, Weeders, Davis, and Chen. Most people thought they wouldn't get any of them. I didn't think that Matt Weeders would take this qualifying offer. I thought, even at the beginning, you know, he hasn't, as Mel said, he hasn't caught three days in a row. Is there going to be another club out there that is willing to give him a three, four, a five-year deal? A Russell Martin money, stuff like that, which clearly he would be looking for. And I thought, man, I don't know whether they're going to be willing to do that. And then you look at the situation where he ends up taking the qualifying offer. I'm like, oh, boy, I wonder if the Orioles really – look, the Orioles are never going to say we didn't want the guy, and there's no reason not to want him. But it is a pretty good raise when you're doubling your salary – um, and, you know, did they think, hey, you know, we know they're not going to take these offers, these big, the, the big three free agents, so let's go ahead and get the draft picks from them, and, and, you know, we'll try to fill up the farm system from there. And then all of a sudden Matt takes it, and you're like, oh, boy. Not that, again, we don't want Matt Wieters, but we won the division with Caleb. Um, you just wondered, did this kind of set them back? They're never going to admit that, nor should they. 
and they may not be feeling in, 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 in any way negative about it. But that's $16 million now that, that I, you would think could, you know, be put to bringing in some pitching. And to me, everybody always talks about this whole situation with whether they lose Davis and whatever. It's like they lost last year because the starting pitching went south. They need to make sure that they have better starting pitching this year. Well, it's a double whammy for Matt Wieters. Yes, as we talked about, you know, he was coming back from injury, and he didn't catch three days in a row. So that generally could scare teams off somewhat. And then when you consider that there wasn't a lot of teams that needed catchers that were looking for it on the free agent market. Atlanta was looking for a catcher, and they were talking about maybe they can sign Matt Wieters, but they liked A.J. Persinski, and uh, they, lead, they liked A.J. Persinski to, um, to mentor Christian Betancourt, so they kept Persinski. The Twins, who needed a catcher to replace Kurt Suzuki every day, re uh, made a trade with the Yankees to pick up a catcher. So there was really only two teams that was looking for a full-time catcher. That was the White Sox, and that would be a difficult team to go to because they're rebuilding. And then, of course, the Texas Rangers. They finished the season with a platoon at catcher, and, the, and there was a lot of talk that the Rangers maybe would need a full-time catcher and scrap the platoon system. But really, when you looked at the market, there really wasn't a lot of options for weeders. And then when he's coming back from injury, you know, it just made sense that he uh, comes back to Baltimore, a place he's very comfortable, and again, he can go through it. And, of course, he's learned now what it takes. He can, he can learn uh, what it is like to be playing your free agent season. And, again, I just think he's going to have a great year because he's going to be healthy, and, and uh, I think it's going to be a fun year for Matt. So Matt Wieter's back with the Orioles. One year, get the qualifying offer, and he accepts it at $15.8 million.